Hey church, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for some more time right here in God's Word. Now, we're going to be finishing off the Gospel of John this week, so that means you need to go to the store and you need to pick up your next scripture journal. We're going to be in the book of Nehemiah because we go from New Testament to Old Testament back and forth until maybe one day we complete the entire Bible. But we're going to be in the book of Nehemiah and the scripture journal looks very similar to this one in John. It has Bible text on one side and then blank space for you to take notes so that you can chronicle your journey with me through our study of the book of Nehemiah. So go pick that up today. It's a great way to support our work here financially and we appreciate you taking this journey with us. Maybe consider taking it with another guy as well. So for today, the final chapter, John chapter 21, I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. It reads, After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, which is just kind of the Roman delineation for the Sea of Galilee. It kind of went by a bunch of names, the sea did. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. So there were seven of them all together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. So they did. They went out and got in the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. <laughs> Such a great cliffhanger to a great moment, right? So the entirety of this chapter, chapter 21, marks just one appearance of Jesus. And it's, John's going to tell this long story. And this instance had to have been epic in John's mind because... He didn't want to omit it from the story, even though when we end chapter 20, that seems like a nice bow to the end of the story. But John throws in one more post-credit scene. You know, it's like one of those post-credit scenes you would see at the end of the movie after the credits roll. I think that's what John is doing right here. So he describes a picture. Seven disciples get into a boat to go fishing. And sometimes when we read this story, we want to be condescending to Peter or the fact that he's going back out to go fishing. We might even view fishing as a distraction from the mission that Jesus gave to him. However, I don't think it is. Uh, they just want to eat and make money, eat and make money <laughs> because they got to live, right? Just like we do. Thus, the disciples are simply carrying on with their responsibility as being men in this life, right? But then in verse three, John highlights this fact. They caught Nothing, which is the cliffhanger right here in this moment. Now, I just got to say this. Sometimes this is how Jesus works in my life. <laughs> I strive to do things just right and then end up with zero results. And I got to be honest, usually when this occurs, I just try to adjust my behaviors to get a better outcome. I'll, I'll even try a few new locations or maybe different bait various speeds, alternate angles, whatever it is, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to try something new. And eventually, if nothing works, as was the case for these disciples here, I become exasperated and frustrated and want to quit. Have you been there? I have. But with age and wisdom, I have discovered that frustrations and human irritations are usually Jesus's means of just getting my attention. <laughs> Yet sometimes because I'm so hooked on my goal, I cannot see his goal. Therefore, in my frustrations, I don't see his way because I'm so focused on trying to get my way. And then my frustration becomes the center of all my attention, of all my will, of all my objectives, and of all my methods. Therefore, he isn't the focus at all, meaning Jesus. So here's the point. Go to work today. Make money, eat, and provide. But don't become so consumed with consuming that you miss the all-consuming God. Because you know what? Sometimes when you get frustrated, which you inevitably probably will today, you need to let those frustrations become a trigger for you. Let it trigger you to turn to Jesus, who is always watching from shore. And I kind of wonder if sometimes he's watching and waiting for us to be irritated, so we'll pay attention to him. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you today. If it has, share it with someone else. I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.